Hi everybody, this is Charlize the Nocti Girl here at the world famous The Market Camera, the new location. Let's see what cool and rare items Dan has inside. Welcome to Tamark and Camera. Come on in. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Glad to have you here. Let Thank you for you. having us. You yeah. Betcha. Can you show us your store, the new location, and I'm, some of your favorite items? I'm happy to. Absolutely. Awesome. Uh, so here, we'll work our way from the left around. So we have our museum, part of our museum. Wow. Uh, and in here, we have parts of the Leica camera so that we can show people how the shutters work and all that, what's inside their camera, as well as little bits of ephemera, including an original ad from 1954 for the M3. And so this is all stuff that we keep here so that people can get an idea of the history of Leica and our connoisseur's corner. And so these are all collectible Leica cameras and also some t-shirts and swag. Um, as you can see, not everything is a Leica. Um, we've got some Roliflex, we've got all kinds of different stuff and we just love cameras. So a little bit of everything. Um, vintage poster, which is where our t-shirts come from. This was printed in 1961 um, for the Leica M2 and I just love the color palette. I think yeah. it's fabulous. And so we have some camera bags, some interesting old, negative um, darkroom gear as well. And then all of our used cameras are, or most of our used cameras, I should say, are here in the showcase. And so when you come and visit us, you can see Leica M cameras, both film and digital. Wow. You might recognize this as an older one, the Leica mm -hmm. M8. So these are all film. We've also got SL, and R series optics as well. So for example, this is a really beautiful 80 millimeter lens that's a Mandler design that was made for the Leica R series, 80 millimeter f1.4. And then all the M lenses. Beautiful. So generally speaking, they go from wides to tellies, mm -hmm. um, some Voigtlander wides, uh, Leica 28s, 35s and 50s, the Noctilux, uh, another Mandler design. This is a 75 Sumalux. Um, not everything is pristine. Some of this stuff has been used well. We also sell Leica screw mount cameras. And so these are the cameras that were made before the M series and the lenses twist off instead of the ordinary bayonet of the Leica M. And so we've got cameras that are from the 30s and 40s, all the way up to the 50s. And then of course the M system, which everybody knows and loves. Um, and we have our little meeting space. Um, this is Stevie. <laughs> Stevie is a cow, was a cow. Has been there and for has a while. Been, been here for a little <laughs> while. And so Stevie is here in part so that people can test lenses because it has all this texture. Oh. We've got a little bit of depth. Um, all of this stuff is great to figure out focus. Oh, yeah. And so a lot of the stuff that we have here is not just ephemera, like the like a teddy bear, but actually made to take photographs of. I love it. And then as we move this way, you can see my cluttered office. Pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. And then our museum, which is next to our gallery. So this is the Rangefinder Gallery. And currently we have four different Chicago photographers exhibited, um, all made on Leica cameras, except for um, some of the medium format and Polaroid stuff. Um, and so these are all four Chicago based photographers. And we change these exhibits fairly frequently. This is the Leica Museum. These are my babies. So I've got a whole bunch of different stuff in here, including a number of early M3s, some black paint cameras, 
all of this is stuff that I have some somehow one way or another fallen in love with. Wow. And so incredible collection. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> It's been going on for a little while. I have what I like to call a catch and release program. So I sometimes will find interesting items and hang on to them for a little while, eventually to find them a new loving home. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we have some wartime cameras. Here, this is one of the oldest and most rare items that we have here. This is a photochemical dropper. Oh and God. this is for a dark room or um, this is a little more than 100 years old. This is probably um, pre-1900, I would think. Wow. And it's the complete glass dropper set. And I think that it was originally made for microscopes, but someone might correct me on that and know more about it. Um, this came from my father's collection. Uh, my father is well and probably out playing golf right now. But when he decided to um, turned the business over to me, some of the items that were in his collection came to my collection, including this photo dropper. Um, but I want to show you my favorite is the Leica M2 button rewind. And this is this is really the camera that started it all for me. I mean, I just fell in love with this camera. Beautiful. Isn't it? So there's something about the button rewind, no self timer, just real simple. Um, I never owned one of these lenses. They were too expensive for me when I was younger. And, but this is what I would have lusted after would be the 51.4 Sumalux on a button rewind M2. And this is an early and very clean copy. Um, this one actually came out of our used offering. So this is not actually my camera. This is for sale. Mm -hmm. My original button rewind Leica camera looks like it got run over by a tank because um, it was all I could afford at the time. Uh, but this is the model that got everything started for me. It's my favorite Leica model far and away. My button rewind is at home uh, because I still use it. Mm -hmm. I use it a lot, along with a little handheld light meter. Um, and so most of the stuff in here is has some level of interest to me, um, not just the historical part of a part of my dad's collection, but black paint stuff, this ephemera, like the belt buckles, um, the Leica sugar cube. That's an actual cube of sugar. And it was used uh, as a promotion in the 1970s. And I have a few of them. I uh, don't think that they could be eaten anymore. I don't really know. <laughs> uh, I'm not really sure. Um, but stuff in here rotates around, you know, some of my favorite things are the ephemera and like the old ad, the pre-war ad with the gal and the Leica camera. Wow. It's just exceedingly rare to find color um, advertisements that are pre-war. Um, microscope camera, also from my dad's collection. And then I really love Leica standards. And so um, this corner, these are my Leica standards and the New York standard on a very rare um, uh, stand, um, which I believe to be authentic. Everybody else seems to think that they're authentic. They come to auction fairly frequently. My dad doesn't agree with me. He thinks it was aftermarket, but um, that's okay. There's always more to learn. And so these are also like a standards um, of varying uh, degrees like this one is a uh, conversion camera, but you can see how close the standard looks to the original Leica ones. Mm -hmm. And there's something about these cameras that I, I, I just really like. And for me, the standard is actually more desirable than the Leica ones. Um, but this is actually kind of a weird little item too. This is a um, panoramic bracket um, for the Leica one, which is oh. very rare and nickel finish. Wow. And then I brought out a couple things that I thought we might like to see, including this Zeiss sonar lens. I've never seen another one looking quite like this. 2855528, which I think is kind of a cool little serial number. Anyway, I get taken sometimes with serial numbers and stuff like that. And so this is one of the things that we love to show off 
in part because I'm just crazy about Leica. Yeah. And so to be able to show people what I collect um, sometimes, you know, starts the conversation or at least interests people yeah. um, in that I'm not just a Leica salesman. Right. I actually know and love and collect this stuff. Um, so this is all part of the catch and release program. Uh, one of these days, uh, these things will be will be for sale. But for now, they sit here just to be. They admired. belong to you. Yeah, that's right. That's right. They sit here just to be admired. Um, and so we're really super proud of being able to show off all of this classic Leica, not just the new stuff. And you may notice that we don't have the displays or towering displays of many boxes of Leica things. Right. Because a box is a box is a box, you know? Let's get right. it out and into people's hands. Oh, yeah. And so we feel very strongly about that, which is why we're always, always so keen to show off and share uh, all of this great stuff. We have collections that wouldn't fit in these cases. So we have collections of literature. Mm -hmm. We have collections of odd bits of ephemera, like my little point and shoot M3 off there in the corner. Um, which was a promotional item for, uh, uh, for Leica in the 50s. And then we have a library as well. And so we like, we like it that people can come and sit down and we can schmooze, we can talk about the cameras. Um, we have a place that we can put out our collections when we get them in. Mm -hmm. This morning before you arrived, this table was half covered by a collection that I'll show you in a moment. Um, we change our displays around. So we have a new M6 that we'll be doing an unboxing video for shortly. And this is where mostly our SL cameras live. This is the Leica display um, that we usually populate and have over here. Um, and lots of monographs. We believe, I believe, that one of the best ways to be inspired and remain inspired or if you get writer's block or mm -hmm. photographer's block, uh -huh. you know, sit down with a monograph. We've got some Henri Cartier-Bresson, we've got Brassaille, we've got Walker Evans, Kappa, the, the, um, the, what is that book called? This is actually really rare. The Mexican Suitcase is terrific. We have some Robert Frank, and then we have some books for sale as well, including um, the Jim Logger set, which is great for collectors. Some photographers who have been in our gallery in the past, and then some informational books as well. But we love it when our customers make books. Yeah. I mean, this is a friend wow. of ours, Jim Rice, who is an Indianapolis photographer, and we've been to Cuba together a few times, um, or at least once anyway. And so Jim made this terrific book. And so we're very pleased to be able to show um, books that are from non-famous photographers. Mm -hmm. And so Jim has done a couple of them, Real Cuba, and then he did a book of Chicago Avenue. And then of course we have some better known photographers as well. And we really like it when people come in, maybe they take a look at a camera or maybe they just plunk down yeah. and, and take a look at some of the best photographs out there. And so we think it's a great way to, to to get inspiration and maintain inspiration, which is why we have all of these books. Where did this one come from? Okay, so some of this is my collection, and some of this, a lot of this actually, most of this, including the Lang, Bresson, um, and some of these really quite rare books, were the collection of a local photographer named Rudolf Janu, who is a great photographer like a lot of photographers, never became famous. Hmm. But if you pick up an old issue of Esquire magazine that has Hunter S. Thompson's very first article in it about the Hells Angels, mm -hmm. this is an article that spawned his book, which became very well known. The photographs alongside that seminal article were taken by Rudy Janney. And he did a lot of wonderful work. And so we're very pleased to have his monographs here um, he would have loved it. He would have absolutely loved it. And so we have some very rare books. This is Henri Cartier-Bresson, and this is a rare, very rare printing. Wow. And so we like to keep these here so that people can enjoy them. There's no point in a rare book not being held, right. you know, right. and checked out. And so that's why we have some of them. You can see that, um, you know, he had them in the sun. Mm -hmm. He used them too. 
you know? So this is a little bit of kind of living legacy. And then books that I need to go through. Um, this is my friend Lucy. This is an artist named Kathy Rose, who's out of New Orleans. Um, I'm crazy about her work um, and it's spectacular stuff. Again, this is something we can bring out so that you can photograph. Mm -hmm. It has terrific texture. Um, and of course I got my little bobblehead. Uh, <laughs> and so this is, the, this is to mark in camera. We're in downtown Chicago. We've got a nice bright space and we're just thrilled that you're here all the way from California. And you know, this is one of my favorite things that's about to happen here. You can actually see the elevated train, which is just so Chicago. Oh yeah. You know? And so this is a Chicago and Franklin L stop and we have the loop train going around right now. And so when you come here and you wanna check out and focus your lens to infinity, mm -hmm. you can actually <laughs> see a little bit of the city um, and we really, really like having a nice, bright, airy yeah, space. Yeah, definitely. So this is, this is where all the magic happens. This is typically where we hold classes as well. Mm -hmm. And so we'll have Leica Academies or every July we do Leica Palooza here, oh. which is basically uh, most of a week long celebration of all things Leica. Oh, wow. And it culminates in a Leica Academy that is either taught by someone Leica brings in or it's taught by myself or mm -hmm. a local artist. And so this is where we gather, we put a few more chairs around the table. So what happens in the, in the Leica Palooza? So Leica Palooza is in the middle of July okay. and it typically, it will have two or three photo walks okay. and it will have a Leica Academy associated with it. Okay. And so it's our hope that this year, Jesse Marlowe comes from, I think he's Australian based, and that he'll come and teach an academy here in the end of July. How fun. And eventually we would like to have many, many, many people, artists, photographers coming to Chicago for Leica Palooza. Mm -hmm. And the idea is that it's the Leica games. Yeah. So, you know, use a lens that you haven't used before, experiment with digital if you're only uh, using film or vice versa. Mm -hmm. And so we want to put Leicas in people's hands and we want to make right. this a very accessible and open space for everyone because typically we operate by appointment only. Right. So that people can come in and sit down and take a look at, at the cameras and really take their time. Yeah. And we don't have a lot of hustle and bustle. So right. it's very kind of chill environment. Right. And so what we want to do for Like a Palooza is create that hub mm -hmm. of environment and have people coming in and out and all, all hours, well, most hours, um, coming in and out, playing with the cameras, experimenting, reading books, talking about photography with other photographers mm -hmm. and have that collaboration that is, um, and connection that's missing here a lot of the time mm -hmm. when it's just, you know, right. a few people talking about Leicas. Right. So we want, the more the merrier, we want as many people in as we can, as we can get talking about Leica. Awesome. <laughs> And wow. then I'll give you a little glimpse, I'll give you a little glimpse into my world. So the guys who run the place are uh, across the other side of the room in the shipping area and they're busy on the phones. This is the, the um, succulent area and my little, my, Subaru, my remote control Subaru, which I love to play with if I get any time. And then we'll just poke our heads in here. It's a mess. We just took in a few Leicas. So we're gonna be going through all this jazz. Um, I wanna, I also have to bring out my friend. This is my, my, one of my inspirations. My Rod Carew, framed Rod Carew picture from when I was a kid, I got to meet him and I'm still so enamored. So I keep this here in the office. Um, and as well as all kinds of literature. I have a collection of literature, fun stuff, and an old ad from when my dad owned the company. Um, ball heads, I'm trying to figure out what to do with. I mean, it's a mess, don't look too close. Um, and then, uh, yeah, and some of my artwork, we've got stuff for the auction and all. This is the place where I make the biggest mess, typically. Uh, and then some of my photographs that eventually will go back into the gallery, I hope maybe one day. So we like to keep a lot of framed stuff here, all kinds of stuff. That way we can actually show people what these cameras do, you know, and what the, what the results are. 
And so anytime I have questions, I come to the library, uh, we'll look stuff up. Um, and just because I want to make sure that the library stays intact, I've taken some of the most rare books and I have them here so that they can be, if you've never heard or seen Dave Heath, it's just spectacular, spectacular stuff. This is a very rare book that belonged to Rudy Janu and I want to make sure that people are able to see these photographs, but I just, the book is so delicate and so rare um, that uh, I only bring it out on, on it, it, by request, typically. Um, and some of the other things that we have, um, th this is a, an uncommon book, Man wow. and Machine. This is, it's really quite rare. And it's, it is actually, um, I think this was corporate work, some of this from IBM. Some of this stuff that Henri Cartier-Bresson did, and this is a very uncommon book. I've never seen another copy, although I imagine that they're out there somewhere, but in true Bresson style, it's just fabulous photographs. And then, oh God, it's such a mess, don't look too close. Um, I'll show you my, my sad Elmar, my, it's my, my teardrop Elmar. Oh, I, Isn't that wow. weird that the, the aperture yeah. blades are not working in, in a teardrop shape. So that, that's my, my sad Elmar. I see. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then, you know, I'm, I can't, I got, I keep everything. So little bucket of Vulcanite, just Aww. in case we need to make repairs. And uh, what else? A top plate that needs to find a home. So here, this is an original Vulcanite for a Leica, um, this would be a Leica 2, I think. So one of these days, this will find a loving home. And of course, you gotta have an auction gavel. Oh yeah. So yeah, so this is the whole, one of my favorite pieces. I'm crazy about literature. And this is one of my favorite pieces. I just love the design. It's just fantastic. So I try to keep stuff like this out so that I can maintain inspiration as well, mm -hmm. because I know that it's probably, probably might not appear that way, but sometimes I get a little bored with cameras. Mm. And so I need to, you know, I kind of need right. to up the ante. So this is where, and we have overstock. So some of Craig some Echo's books, our old auction catalogs. Um, and so this is, this is the real hub of the library. And then I also keep, this is a photograph that my dad took of my mom a Aww. couple years before I was born. Aww. And she's like, it looks like she's getting out of a limo. I mean, it's, a, I don't know, it's like a, the star shot. Some Leica salesman left this at an event. Wow. And uh, we have been keeping, keeping it for them. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just great. It's great to have a little bit of space I know that you didn't see our old space, but it was a lot smaller than this. It wasn't That's as bright, it wasn't as airy. Mm. So yeah, this is, it's really nice to actually have this much room. So yeah, this, and this is the glimpse into the area that people don't usually see. Um, mainly because it's a, we're working camera store. So we've got to tear stuff apart, right. put it back together. We have to evaluate all of these. We have to look through all the lenses, test everything out. And so this is basically our staging area and Rod Carew is watching over everything to make sure that it stays <laughs> safe. <laughs> and, so, uh, and so there you have it. This is the, the new location for Tamark and Cameron in downtown Chicago. Thank you so much. Oh my goodness, it's my pleasure. Come and visit anytime. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And you can visit without bringing your checkbook. Just come and see all the Leicas. You don't have to buy anything, really. It's okay, just come and visit. Bring a credit card though. Oh, uh, we take credit cards. <laughs> Wow, what an incredible tour. Thank you, Dan, for showing us around your amazing collection. Alrighty, you've been knocked up today and I'm really knocked out. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.